Hello my friends, this is where we finished last week and start today. I would like to focus mainly on basic colors with some design improvements to keep everything logical. Ok, let's get straight to the point without further ado. For Tiger I prepared a figure from Masterbox set. It's not some fancy design but it fits perfectly to the vehicle. I changed the head to resin one from Evolution Miniatures and added a walkie talkie and tourniquet. I am very happy with it and I hope that I will be able to paint it nicely. Ok, now we can start preparing the model for painting. Of course, first I detach all possible elements from the main body of the vehicle. I remove all blue tax remains and clean the miniature using a reliable model degreaser. As you can see, it can be used regardless of the material we work with. Resin, plastic, metal, everything works with this product. The only exception is the clear window plastic that can be easily damaged, which I will see in a few moments. A bit of liquid has flown under the masking tape and I will have to solve this problem at a later stage. The drying time is a huge advantage of this product. You can start painting almost immediately after cleaning as it evaporates within seconds. Therefore, it's also worth doing in a well-ventilated room. Cleaning a model such as the Tiger takes no more than 3 minutes. I bet it's not possible with water and liquid, especially since it takes ages to dry. Even before the primer appears on the model, I cover all metal towing ropes and antenna with a metal primer to increase the adhesion of the paint. I used two primers, black for the chassis and wheels and grey for the car body, front bumper and arbolite weapon station. Now I'm starting the actual painting. Of course the black XF1 is on the bottom first. To be honest, I could have left in the color of the undercoat because it won't be visible anyway and the later weathering will do the right job. But when you paint, then you paint. The same shade was used to paint the rims but for the tires I used acrylic rubber black. In order to further distinguish the dark shades on each tire, I painted a delicate shade of German grey. The effect is very good and visible when we compare before and after painting. Now I started painting camo colors. I was unnecessarily guided by the instructions from the set because the colors that were subjected there didn't correct at all. Just look at this sand shade which is far from what you can see in the pictures of real vehicles. The XF59 is completely bad in my opinion. I tried to get the right color by adding XF78 and 88 and I think I managed to do it. By the way, quick tip on how to remove a defect that appeared during painting and more precisely when a rough layer of paint appears on the surface. All you need is a fine sandpaper or a sponge and we have the solution. Ok, you will need blue tack to make the right edges for the camo spots. Painting this type of camo is not a rocket science, but I found that not everyone has such a skill to paint camo spots without problems. Therefore I am going to show you a simple way to paint it. Long sausages or snakes, whatever you call them, are placed on the model by pressing them onto the surface. It's worth paying special attention to any protruding elements. Here the tools are a bit of problem, but you need to press the blue tack firmly so that the paint doesn't flow into undesirable places. It's worse when we have some photo etched elements. Then there is a chance that the mask will break these elements from the surface of the model. So you have to do it delicately and check that you aren't damaging your work. Of course, in order to copy the correct shape and arrangement of the subsequent spots, it's worth using photos of the original and good drawings. I covered the spaces with masking tape. I used plain painter's tape for this, which is pretty cheap and does the job. I cut it into small pieces while it's stuck to the mat on my workbench and piece by piece I add it to the model. 
It's better to work with small pieces than with large ones because they are easier to fit into the round shapes formed by the blue tack. So this is how it looks like before the painting. The second time I trusted the manual. This is why I started to paint with dark green, which seemed too dark after painting. I had too many doubts about what it looked like on the model. That's why I decided to add some XF26 to the rest of paint I had in the airbrush tank. I applied a lighter shade to dark green. More as a filter, if I can say about it at this stage of painting, than as a regular surface coloring. I was still missing something and added XF76 to the residue in the airbrush tank. So in total I mixed 26 with 76. I applied such a light shade to the surface and now it was finally as I wanted. By the way, forgive me the bad shot, but it was hard to maneuver the model and show everything. I chose painting accuracy rather than framing. I hope that after all everything is fairly well visible. And finally I can take my masking off. The matter is simple and rather too much doesn't need to be said here. I think it will be more important to thank my patrons who support me all the time. These are really great people thanks to whom I can see that there is a chance to do what I love to the end of the world and one day longer. Thank you so much guys. If you are wondering whether it's worth joining the company I can assure you that it's worth it. In addition to being able to watch the films in advance without advertising, you will also be able to see other projects that I'm working on and that are available only on this platform. Think about whether you can spare a few dollars to support me. If so, thank you in advance and if not, I suggest that you should think again. It's time to finish the camo painting. Only the black elements that are the easiest to paint with a brush remain. They have characteristic shapes and you can imitate their layout, but I did it on my model with a pinch of salt. The effect is still very good, even though some stains differ significantly from the original. I'm not worried about it because I know that the final effect will be good enough not to pay attention to such trifles. Oh my god, what did I just say? Exactly to have the pleasure of making and not to be stressed by some spots. Exactly that, just in different words. What do you think about it? Comment section is open. Zvezda adds a special foil to its models with the shapes of the mirrors cut out. Simple to use and pretty cool. I've used it already in their other models. You can check it on Patreon. Yeah, such an incentive once again to check what's in there. I added the glasses with pigment cement. It's perfect for this. Now I'm starting the detail painting stage. I painted the rubber mudguards dark grey and more specifically rubber black. The winch rope was previously painted black together with a fragment of chassis frame, so now it's enough to wipe it with a soft pencil. The armor plates mounted on the door received a layer for further weathering and coating with rust and other effects. The screws were silvered and after the weathering I will add color again with a pencil. The front bumper cover will also be rusted as an example of field conversion. At the beginning the towing cable will be silver, but in the later stage it will change its shade a little. It's already attached to the model with CA glue. Windscreens will be obscured to a large extent by additional armor, but I have decided to make wiper marks now. It's enough to mask the trace with masking tape and add a little pigment. The effect is easy to achieve. The whole structure is made of pieces of plastic and I was copied the idea from the photo of a real vehicle. 
Of course the basic color is the same as the armor plates on the door. The driver's and passenger's windows will be additionally secured with a net, identical to the front bumper and coming from the same photo etched kit. Before I glued them they were painted and later they will be even more weathered. Such delicate elements are the best stick with CA glue even if it leaves tiny traces, later weathering will definitely cover them. And at the end the markings. This sign is probably known to everyone who watches the news. It's easy to paint and even easier to paint over. Yeah, exactly, paint it over because my model will be marked as captured by Ukrainians. Someone may ask why paint Z when it will be painted over anyway. What for? I used X1 which is glossy paint and applied it sloppy to give it the right character. And when you look at the right angle you can see Z underneath. The two colors of the Ukrainian flag are also painted quite inaccurately but thanks to this the effect is great. Additionally some small dots and traces of paint splashes and it's over. It turned out great, right? I'm very pleased with the effect. In the next episode I will be doing weathering and if I can I will also paint the figure and make a little stand. For now thank you for watching, please subscribe, like and share my channel, write some comments below and visit my patreon. That's all for today, see you all in the next video, cheers!